Optic Gaming is a name synonymous with competitive esports. Even if they aren't winning championships, they're usually a monumental force that strikes fear into the hearts of their opponents. This year, however, in the Call of Duty scene, Optic was unable to maintain the dominance we come to expect. And after a monumental loss in the Stage 1 playoffs, for in the Grand Finals, where Optic lost those two series to phase, coming out of the loser's bracket, a roster that was once considered the most skilled roster in COD at the time broke up. Optic made some changes, and unfortunately, the next roster was unable to do much more, and they ended with a very disappointing season. So the question is, what is Optic's next move? Connor? Well, I think that we need to preface this by saying there's a difference between what we think Optic will do and what we think Optic should do. Those are very different. What I think Optic's going to do, and I don't know if you guys have heard a lot of the rumors going around, but it's almost confirmed, I mean 99%, that Optic is going to be, it's going to pick up Dashy and TJ Haley. Now, on paper that roster is talented. It's very talented, just like every Optic roster. You have TJ Haley, who was on an integral part of the last Rise team. You know, they, they're considered the best team from World War II. And you have Dashy, who's the up-and-coming player who everyone thinks has the potential to be a top-five player in COD. And then, obviously, you're anchored by Stump and Krim, who are top-five players all-time in COD history. But how will this roster actually perform? Who knows? Now, what we think that they should have done is, you know, we probably think that they shouldn't have gotten rid of Octane or Methods. And we know that they got rid of... Octane. So Octane has moved on to 100 Thieves. Personally, I think at this point, the best move would have been to keep Methods. Uh, the biggest reason is consistency in my mind. We're going into a brand new game now. This isn't like mid-season where everybody has an idea. You see what players can perform. We're going into a whole new game with crazy amounts of changes. The, the the difference between World War II and Black Ops 4 is going to be ridiculous. So to have three players sticking together, and it's not like Method is a bad player by, by any viewpoint, or even Octane for that matter. Either one of them. It's not like you're kicking them off because they had a bad performance. The team didn't have a good performance. But the individual players have still demonstrated they have the skill. So I think it would, have, it would be the best move to at least keep Methods, and from there, I'm not 100% sure. I would go with a younger player or like mid-tier. Don't go for a super experienced player. Try to keep the future in mind. Maybe pull in a young guy or a mid-tier guy that's been performing well and sort of try to groom them into hopefully a, a better meshing team. Somebody you think that fits well with the team isn't just a super ridiculous player. I think that that's what they're trying to go after with a player like Dashy. I mean, Dashy is a newer, younger, up-and-coming player who has lots of skill that, if taught right by Crim and Scump, could be great. I don't know if I agree with the TJ Haley pickup. I think TJ Haley's been streaky at best this last season. You, you've seen him. He's had games where he's dropped 50 kills on hard point. But he's also had games where he's gone double negative on a hard point. And I don't know if combining that with Skump, where Skump currently is, is the best thing. Because you could have maps where they could both drop 50 in a hard point, and then you could have a hard point map where they both go double negative. And I don't know if that's what you want out of your two primary subs. I think you kind of want to surround Skump with consistency at this point, just based on how he performed in the last season. But And not to say that Skump is a bad player by any means. We've just noticed that... There have been inconsistencies in, in Scump's performances, uh, and, and a lot of the Optic players. I mean, the, the roster, for whatever reason, things just didn't, didn't seem to be jiving quite rap well. But I, I agree. T, TJ strikes me as hot. Dashy, I can kind of, I can understand. I, get, I guess, hopefully, maybe they've just had that aha moment, and they're looking for something different. They're not going for... Okay, let's just find the four best slayers in pod, throw them on a team, and say, "All right, there, like you're, you're perfect." That obviously hasn't worked out. Uh, I mean, even even last year, that the Karma formal roster, they still sucked in search and destroy. I, I mean, that has just always been a problem. 
if they can turn that around, it almost doesn't matter who you have. If you can start winning search and destroy games, and you have Scump and Krim on that team, you're you're looking at a pretty ridiculous roster. And that's the thing. I think that they're going for a much improved search and destroy team because you even saw Optic, even when they formed, with the exception of you know in the very beginning of the year, even with their unbelievable hardpoint team, the greatest hardpoint team ever. They were still losing sometimes in hardpoint. And then once they lost that first hardpoint map, it was over. You saw that against yeah. EG in the pool play. Once they lost that first hardpoint map, I was like, here we go again, there's a 3-0. Because if Optic loses hardpoint, they don't know how to recover. Yeah. And it just spirals downhill. It's not My, a good sign. The problem with this team is, is yes, Dash is a great search and destroy player. Yes, TJ is a great search and destroy player. But who's calling the plays? Because I don't think either of them are in-game shot callers in search and destroy. That's true. And so you're still relying on, I, I'm guessing it was Krim before, you're still relying on Krim to make the calls. And I don't know if that's worked out. Because I know for sure Skump is not an in-game shot caller in search and destroy. That's never been what he's been good at. And that's it's not going to happen now. So you're relying a lot on Krim or a very young player coming in here and telling players like Krim and Skump what to do, and I just don't know how well that's going to work yeah, out. I don't see that happening at all. I, I would, I hadn't even thought about that before. I would think Krim would have to be the one still calling the shots, and if, if, that, if that's the case, I mean, maybe we can see some improvement, but if you're calling the shots, and you're calling bad shots, it doesn't matter what the, the skill of those other players, the players are. Again, we've, we've seen that. That is what they've been struggling with for the last two years and so that's what we that's that's what we think Optic is going to do now what we think Optic should do right now what is, what is the roster that you would like to see Optic put together assuming I th I they think, keep I assuming think they keep, keep methods is is probably my biggest thing and I would say wait until Black Ops 4 comes out. I know that that's not going to happen. Every team wants to have a roster going into Black Ops 4. I think they need to wait to see what comes out of Black Ops 4 because then you can tailor that pick towards, do we want to pull in a, a sub? Do we want to find a sub player? Is it going to be that faster place game? If that's the case, you go for the sub. If it's a, if Treyarch's able to make some adjustments and be able to make ARs a little better than what we saw in the beta, maybe you go for that flex or even maybe even another a, a core AR player, but with the ability to play sub. You know, find what that that leaning tendencies are. I think it's definitely, if, assuming that idea of keeping methods. Uh, I would obviously be someone, probably at the very least, that, that leans toward the sub side from, from what we've seen so far. But yeah. Yeah, I I definitely, I agree with you in, I don't know why teams are so eager to make changes. I don't know if it has something to do with the contracts. I don't know if it has something to do with when, yeah, like in the beginning of the season, contracts are locked in and then it's harder to change later. I think that does have something to do with it. I think it's harder to make adjustments mid-season because teams, if a team likes their team, they're not going to let their players leave in the middle of the season. I mean, you saw that this year with FaZe when Optic tried to pick up Zuma and FaZe was not having any of it because they wanted to keep that current roster intact. So I guess we'll just have to see. Yep, we'll find out this October. You guys, leave a comment and let us know what you think Optic can and should do. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We're going to release new content every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to catch all our latest content. We are bracking out.